The Hawker Hunter FGA9 is the latest premium plane available for the British tech tree, boasting impressive performance and payload options. Is this premium worth its high price tag? Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the performance, weapons and playstyle of this Rhodesian ground attacker. Starting with the very basics, this plane is a rank 6 battery rating 9.7 premium aircraft, and with the premium status of this plane, you obviously get a very good reward modifiers. The FGA9 gets 660% RP modifier, as well as a 780% silver line modifier. Whilst the RP modifier is very good for its tier, the 780% silver line modifier is a little bit less than the 810% modifier found on many of the late tier premium aircraft, such as the Shenyang F5. Overall, the modifiers are very good, both for making money and grinding out the British tech tree. Being a premium vehicle, this plane must be bought off the Guardian store for the price of 50 euros. For that price tag, you get the plane, 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium time. In one of my older videos, I stated that this plane was going to be bad due to its high battle rating. So, was I right or wrong? If you would like to know more about the performance of this plane, as well as my opinion on the price tag, then stick around for the end of the video. The story of the Hunter FGA-9 starts in 1954. The first variant of the Hunter to enter service was the F1, which we already have in game. There were several issues with this variant, both down to the fuselage and the poor performance of the early Avon engines. Several variants of the Hunter later, and we arrive at the Hunter F6, which we also have in game. The F6 designation was given because of the vastly new improved Avon engine. This new engine gave the plane far more power than previous variants, and more importantly, a lot better reliability. As well as a new engine, the F6 got new fuel tank layouts, as well as the iconic dog tooth leading edge notch on the outer wing. The Hunter, throughout all of its variants, would serve as the RAF's primary air defence fighter up until it was retired from service in 1963. From 1954 to 1963, the Hunter saw action in several campaigns, including the Suez Crisis and the Brunei Revolt. The F-6 was retired due to the introduction of every British main's dream war thunder plane, the English Electric Lightning. The Lightning was much faster and far more suitable for the modern emerging battlefield. However, a few years before the introduction of the Lightning, in 1958, the RAF were conducting a trial for a new ground attack aircraft. The two planes being tested were the Hunting Percival Jet Provost and the Fallen Nat. Both of these planes were essentially RAF trainers. The Hunter F-6 was entered into this trial and basically aced it, easily outcompeting the two other planes. Hawker received an order to convert 40 Hunter F-6s into the ground attack variant, designated the Hunter FGA-9. This new variant had far stronger wings, which allowed for a much wider range of weapons to be carried, as well as the introduction of wet hardpoints, allowing the use of drop tanks to increase the plane's range. This new variant also had a parachute located in the tail, as this plane was expected to be used on rough airfields, close to the front line, and couldn't always rely on long, concrete runways. After the introduction of the English Electric Lightning in 1963, the RAF gave another contract to Hawker to convert an additional 88 Hunter F6s into the FG89 standard, for a total of 128 Hunter FGA9s being created. The FGA9 was used extensively by the British in the Aden campaign, and was particularly favoured by SAS soldiers, as they regularly needed high precision airstrikes, and with the great weapon load, as well as four 30 meter cannons, the Hunter FGA-9 proved to be a very capable ground attack aircraft. The Hunter we have in game as our premium is a Rhodesian export model. In 1963, 12 Hunter FGA-9s were sold to the state of Rhodesia, where it was used extensively in the Rhodesian Bush War against the Zandla and Zipra terrorist groups throughout the late 60s and all of the 1970s. After the collapse of the Rhodesian state in 1979, the Hunters were used by the Zimbabwean Air Force well into the 1980s. The most obvious jet to compare the F-9 to is the Hunter F-6 in the British tech tree. The F-9 uses the Rolls-Royce Avon 207 engine, producing 4,230 kilograms of thrust, whereas the Hunter F-6 uses the Avon 203, only producing 4,200 kilograms of thrust. The F-9 has a small increase of 30 kilograms of thrust, but this isn't really felt during normal flights. Both F-6 and F-9 have excellent outputs from their engines, so more power can only be a good thing. 
I tested the acceleration of both jets. I started timing when the jets were stationary. I rotated off the runway at around 400 km per hour and leveled out the plane at around 200 meters. I then waited until both planes exceeded 1000 km per hour in level flight. The Hunter F6 took 1 minute and 34 seconds, whereas the F9 took 1 minute and 27 seconds. That's a 7 second difference in favour of the F9. Altogether, the F9 just feels more powerful than the F6, at least in terms of acceleration, as they both have the same top speed of 1148 km per hour. But the F9 seems to accelerate to that top speed faster. Both planes really show their acceleration above 800 km per hour. Acceleration under that speed is still very good, but over that magic number, the Hunter acts like a rocket. Therefore, in games, always try and keep your plane above 800 km per hour, as this will allow you to rapidly accelerate back up to your top speed. For full clarification, I tested the F6 carrying SRAMs and the F9 carrying the two AM9 missiles. I chose to test the plane carrying weapons, as this is how they will be flown in an actual game. The stat cards of both the F6 and F9 indicate that they have a turn time of 25 seconds, but I found that the F9 is a much better turner than the F6. I believe this is down due to the strength and wings that the F9 got for its ground attack roll. When turning at 1000 km per hour, the wings on the F6 will rip at around 10 Gs, whereas I couldn't even get the wings to rip on the F9. The F9 also has a better initial pull, allowing you to pull 12 Gs, making it much better at dogfighting than the F6. The better turn rate of the F9, as well as the better acceleration, make it more forgiving than the Hunter F6 in my opinion. You can get stuck into a swarm of enemies, as well as pull hard Gs to reverse someone on your tail. Both Hunters, when at speeds over around 700km per hour, have very good roll rates, as well as very good negative and positive control elevator authority, making this plane very responsive to pilot inputs, even at speeds where most other planes will start to compress. Although this plane does have very good acceleration and a decent top speed, it is not capable of supersonic flight, both down to a lack of power as well as an airframe that is not designed for breaking the sound barrier. The F9 is fast enough to approach the speed of sound in a dive, but it will rip its wings if they exceed the sound barrier. You can use your air brake to prevent a wing overload like this. The air brake is very effective at slowing down the plane and is located at the rear of the jet and is incredibly visible, so you shouldn't ever end up flying around with your air brakes deployed without knowing, unlike some other jets. The air brake can also be used to tighten your turning circle. If you deploy it for a few seconds when pulling a high G turn, it can dramatically tighten your turning circle and drop your speed enough to get enemy pilots to overshoot. The last use of the air brake is for landing. Slowing the plane down to around 400 km per hour will allow you to safely deploy the landing gear and at 350 km per hour, the landing flats can be deployed. As well as the air brake, I also mentioned the F9 has a tail parachute, which is modelled in game. This drastically reduces the time it takes to land and rearm, getting you back into the battle sooner. To summarise, the Hunter F9 feels like a slight improvement over the Hunter F6 in pretty much every way, with the most useful improvements being the tightening of the turning circle and the strengthened wings. Your default weapons are the standard four 30mm Aiden cannons found on all of the other Hunter variants in game. The Aidens are essentially revolver cannons, they have a very high sit quick fire rate of 1200 rounds per minute, and they hit incredibly hard. You get the same 600 rounds in total as the other Hunters, and this ammo load is more than enough to get several kills. While the Aidens are very good at close range, their velocity drops off rapidly, meaning that at anything more than around 0.8km away, they become pretty ineffective. But by no means are the Aidens bad guns. In fact, they are probably the best jet guns in the game at the minute, with only a few hits being needed to destroy any plane. We talked in the previous segment about the F9's performance being better in terms of manoeuvrability when compared to the F6. And this makes these guns even better, as it is now much easier to get these guns on target. Being a ground attack plane, it has a large selection of payloads available. The first type of weapon are dumb bombs, and you have two different variants. Both variants can be carried in several different configurations. The first bomb is a 500 pound high explosive MC Mark II. This is an armor piercing bomb designed for destroying reinforced installations such as bunkers. Seeing as these structures do not exist in War Thunder, these bombs are pretty useless when compared to our second dumb bomb. The second bomb is a 1000 pound Mark I. This is the same bomb found on pretty much all of the World War II bombers and ground attackers in the British tree. It has 290 kilograms of TNT equivalent and will destroy any object within 13 meters. This bomb is the obvious choice for anyone wanting to destroy pillboxes or bases in RRB, as well as players wishing to perform the role of closer support in ground realistic battles. Either two or four of the Mark I or Mark II can be carried by this plane, but these bombs can also be carried alongside two pods of Sneb rockets. In the configuration of two Sneb pods and two 500 pound Mark IIs, 
are two SNEB pods and two 1000 pound Mark 1s. The SNEB rockets are pretty good and you can carry 36 rockets across two pods. The SNEBs have 300mm of penetration against a 90 degree surface at any range. They also have a velocity of 600m per second, making them pretty easy to aim against both static and slow moving targets. The last weapon loadout are the two AM9Es. These are American in origin and are the same missile found on the F100 and F4 Phantom in the American tech tree. These missiles are very good as they have a 10G maximum overload, making them very potent against anyone who has bled a little bit too much speed. They have a maximum lock on range of 5.5km, but I would only really recommend launching a missile at a maximum range of 2km away. Players will receive a missile warning and will turn, so firing from 5km away is practically a waste of a missile. Instead, get close to a player, preferably someone who isn't turning. These missiles are good, but they are still easy to beat if you have energy, as a simple high G turn is enough for them to lose lock. As I mentioned, these missiles excel against enemies in low energy states, so if you see an enemy that has been in an extended dogfight or is climbing sharply to chase someone, firing a missile at them isn't a bad idea, as they will usually not have the energy to pull a high G turn. They also have a very wide tracking cone, allowing you to position your plane in an advantageous direction before firing the missile. It also allows you to keep a lock on your target when doing minor turns. All of these factors combined make the AM-9Es a very potent missile. While the AM-9Es aren't as deadly as the SRAMs found at the Hunter F6, they still make the F9 a very deadly plane. The vast bomb and rocket payloads allow flexibility and freedom to pilots who are not necessarily the best dogfighter, and wish to ground pound in order to grind out RP and silver lines. The weapons available to you make this jet a very effective fighter and ground attacker in air realistic, as well as a very potent close air support weapon in ground realistic battles. When I spawn into a game, I take the two AM9E missiles, as I prefer to fight over enemy pilots as opposed to ground attacking. However, for players who wish to do this, I'd recommend the loadout of two SNEB pods and two 1000 pound Mark 1 bombs. Being battle rating 9.7, you can either be down tiered and face subsonics, such as the F-86 Sabre and MiG-15 Bis, or up tiered and face the supersonics, such as the F-4 Phantom and MiG-19S. This is important as your playstyle should change depending on the battle rating of the game. Takeoff is pretty simple, let the plane accelerate up to around 400km per hour and then just lift the nose and you will lift off without a problem. I keep the nose level a few hundred metres off the ground and allow the plane to accelerate up to that magic 800km per hour figure. Here is where the battle rating of the game is important. If you are in a full up tier, you are pretty much forced to play in a supporting role. You just don't have the speed or acceleration to fight the top tier jets one on one. If I am in an up tier, I will tend not to climb, as the supersonic jets can outrun you even if you use gravity as a boost. Your only defence against supersonic jets is your ability to turn. Proper use of your air brake is vital here, deploying it for a few seconds and then retracting it is vital. Remember, you always want to try and stay above 800km per hour even after a turn, especially if there are multiple enemies on your 6. Your ability to defensively fly is surprisingly good against supersonic jets. Your turn rate, roll rate and elevator authority make you a pretty tough fight if an enemy commits to fighting you. The problem is that most pilots at top tier aren't stupid and they won't try and turn fight you in a supersonic jet. They will instead boom and zoom you, which you are almost entirely unable to defend against. When you are in a down tier, it is pretty much the opposite play style. When fighting 8.7 jets, you are the king of speed and high end acceleration. And compared to 8.7 jets, your ability to turn is pretty poor. Instead, you should stay fast and conserve your energy, as if you get slow, you have very little chance of reversing an 8.7 jet. Again, the magic 800km per hour speed should be kept in the back of your mind. I tend to take off and climb slightly, and then dive on enemies below me. These enemies are pretty much forced to turn. Your job in a down tier is to essentially act as a bull rushing through groups of enemies. The logic behind this is to force the enemies to turn and get slow for your allies. You yourself should refrain from turning with the enemies, and instead extend and focus on maintaining your energy. A good way to do this is to zoom out of an area and then turn in the vertical, rather than a flat horizontal turn which will just bleed your speed. In a down tier, your missiles are even more effective, as most 8.7 jets can only pull 10 Gs at the very top end of their max speed. So if you spot any lower tier planes going slowly, you pretty much have a guaranteed kill if you are within 2km. To summarise, in a down tier, keeping your speed up and booming and zooming is essential, as you cannot outturn an 8.7 fighter. In an up tier, your only real defence is your ability to turn, all whilst making sure to keep your speed above 800km per hour in order to maintain your excellent high end acceleration. To conclude, I believe the Hunter F9 is a really good plane. I feel like it is competitive even in a full up tier. My main issue with the Hunter F6 was that it could not outturn several supersonic jets. 
as its wings would snap at 10 Gs. But the Hunter F9 fixes that issue with its reinforced wings, and you can finally at least offensively fly against much faster opponents. I'd say that around 60% of my games are down tiers to 8.7, and here you are incredibly competitive as long as you are disciplined with your energy and don't allow yourself to get too slow. I regret making the comments in my video on the British Phantom, as the F9 is a very good premium jet. I would say it is on the border of being overpowered when it is fully down tiered, but I think at the minute, in the current state of War Thunder, it is as balanced as it will ever get at least without the battle ratings being severely decompressed. The price of 50 euros is very expensive, and I wouldn't recommend people buying this point unless they are very serious about grinding out the British tech tree. There are other premiums in the game already which are much better for grinding out silver lions, such as the T154 and the G55S. So if you have no interest in the British tech tree, then I see no reason for you to buy this jet. If you are serious about grinding out the British tech tree, I would still only recommend getting this jet when you reach the early British jet fighters. If you are just starting with the Brits, the Corsair Mark II and the Wyvern are much better starter premiums, and are also a lot cheaper. But if you are already a high tier British player, and want a premium to grind out those rank 6 and rank 7 planes, then the FGA9 is a good plane. I buy all of these premiums myself, I have no sponsorship from Gaijin, and I do not regret buying this jet. Even though I already have every British plane unlocked, it has still been an enjoyable plane to fly. Its wide array of weapon loadouts give players flexibility and freedom in Ur AB and ground realistic battles. I currently have a 57% win rate and a kill to death ratio of just over 2. Whether that is down to me being a good pilot or this plane being an incredibly good top tier premium, I'll leave up to you. I hope you found this video useful lads and thank you very much for watching.